Hey everybody! Hey, I'm the Mysterious JG's hands. <laughs> I'm Bobo the Vulture's hands. They're a little closer. Oh, well, that's one. Uh, this is an unboxing. You don't want me to move the other hand, right? No, now. This is an unboxing video for uh, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain because I got the like fancy pants edition. But um, thought I'd throw in a quick bogus video, bogus unboxing for the collector's edition at Final Fantasy X X Two while I'm at it. It's a mysterious fake. Yeah, because I because I already opened it. That's basically why. Um, so it's got a nice little picture of Yuna on the cover. It's got the original artwork from the back of Final Fantasy X on the back, but with different text. Uh, you got the game disc. This may or may not be exclusive to the limited edition. I don't think it's exclusive, actually. Depending on whether you're feeling like being, um, you know, philosophical or dirty, it's either the yin and yang represented by the two of them, or they're about to do something saucy. Um, what can she do for you? What can she do for you? Well, apparently, um, you know, you could put it this way, but it's meant to be this way. She's standing on her head to make her man happy. Yeah. Uh, there's the disc. <laughs> there may or may not have been an insert here that I've already lost. The uh, the limited edition part, and this limited edition costs like ten bucks more than the regular edition, and you get a little calendar. Um, so there you go. You got. Oh, oh my god, I broke it! I was trying to move this slightly out of the way so that you could move the calendar this is a down. Bit cheesy here, too. This, like, yeah. glue thing. So it's like, oh my god, it's a super ornate box. Oh, wait, there's shitty glue now. Anyway, um, so you got your, uh, your cover. Cover of the calendar is Yuna, being all Yuna y. Um, calendar Girl for May is Yuna doing a kind of like Snow White, the birds land on me and chirp at me uh, routine. Chirp me? Chirp. What can I chirp you? You've got uh, Kamari and the gang here. This is presumably, this is the cast as it stood before you leave Besaid. So I imagine this is that. That's my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the game. Out ready for a big exciting adventure. It's good stuff, but Bobo's trying to hold the camera and I don't want to extend this too long. No, no, you're fine. Go do what you want. Like. You apparently have 26 minutes and 48 seconds oh, left good. in your memory. This is actually take two because we tried to do it on our phone and ran out of space. So then you've got the gull wings of Final Fantasy X-2. Highlights include, well, you got the kid here with, I guess, Carrot sticks. You've got a uh, bro uh, brother in there macking on Yuna. Riku doesn't seem to mind. Yuna doesn't even seem to mind. So, you know, hey, brother, more power to you. And uh, Payne doing a quasi sexy pose. And in the background, you've got Buddy, always the forgotten member of the Goings, most known for having a head that's smaller than his feet, at least in this picture. Actually, I just noticed here, um, all along the edge here, uh, perforations so that if you wanted to save these uh, bits of artwork, after the year 2015. Oh, yeah. So, so after got, this year. Thank goodness I have that option. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Titus taking a soak. Uh, Titus in his uh, sensory deprivation tank. Yeah, he's in the uh, TARDIS Zero room there. <laughs> he's uh, sleeping in there with the Elfin Man's bones. <laughs> get a rough regeneration. Uh, you've got Yuna doing, I guess, the sending. Um, She's catching a wind and sitting on top of the world. You've got this rather interesting picture. It is the. It is the campfire scene uh, outside of the ruins of Xanarkin, an important scene in the game. But here's what makes it interesting. you got Kamari, Lulu, Waka, Titus, Riku, Yuna, Orin, and I don't know who that's supposed to be. When I look at this, other than maybe Titus and Kamari, he's the first figure your eyes are drawn to, and he's like the, the artist inserting himself in the picture deal. Maybe so, he is Yoshitaka Amano, which I can't really get this to autofocus on, but that is the illustration credit in the bottom corner. Well, see, you already signed it. You don't need to... People, I mean, artists used to put themselves in these pictures, but yeah. usually a larger crowd group than this. And not like you wouldn't draw a painting of the Beatles where there was a fifth guy as prominent as the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> so, shame on you, Yoshitatsu. Um, then you got uh, Riku and the Forbidden Machina, as Boba pointed out last time. Um, so I don't think this is the Gullwings, I think this is Riku and her pals on the ship from the first game. Um, you got Titus, who's just kind of <laughs> looking at you like, you can't make me clean up my room, Dad. This is, this is Titus's like, early 90s album cover. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his, uh, his album, Music Revolution. I actually looked that up on YouTube the other day. It's it's incredible. Why did you do that? <laughs> Why did you do that? Did you do that? Here's Sheen. Oh yeah. There's some, some more Sheen. This is uh, 
you know, I, I'm not obsessed with tentacle rape. I'm talking about Japanese illustrations, so it's a relevant topic. But this is a tentacle rape picture where the tentacles are, you know, Seymour's hair. He will be missed in a Final Fantasy X-2, He's I don't mind telling you. truly a great friend of the people. <laughs> good name he needs a good villain, folks. Yep. You got Titus fighting underwater monsters, and it was a scene early in the game where he's like fighting a monster underwater. It didn't look anything mm -hmm. like that. This thing's got like a weird, like, beanie. I don't know. I only ever saw the back of it. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> I have been, I have had a few people ask me, are you going to play the remaster? I'm like, I played through the entire game. I, now, admittedly, the bosses were backwards in some cases, because <laughs> of the emulator. And last but not least, we have the like really goofy looking airship from the second game. And uh, that's an airship. That's supposed to be an airship. I mean, it it looks a little bit more like an airship when it hasn't been like extra fantasied up in this illustration. It looks like it looks like somebody's like vague concept of what a motorcycle would be if they had a lot of mushrooms or something. I'm not really. That's pretty much the idea of the one that you see in the game. <laughs> All right. Then. So, and uh, I'll be opening this this at some point down the road. All right. And uh, then we have the... <laughs> okay, just forget that you saw that. This is... Because, uh, guys, seriously... I yeah, was... no, it was pretty much just held together by the, the uh, shrink wrap. Yeah, the shrink wrap, and I took the shrink wrap. Like, downward a little bit. Sure. Yeah. For, 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 for ideal framing purposes. So but, we got yeah. the Diamond Dogs. That was, of course, uh, the... The stable that consisted of Diamond Dallas Page, the Diamond Stud, and Vinny Vegas. So they're, yeah, they're the Diamond Dogs. Um, it's Metal Gear Solid V, the Phantom Pain, Technical Espionage, Operations, so totally different from previous games. Of course, when the Diamond Dogs, uh, they tried to sort of bring back that idea in the WWF, they just did it with uh, Diamond Dallas Page and Dogface Gremlin, Rick Steiner, because they're just like, oh, we got a guy who's Doc and a guy who's Diamond, all right, let's put them <laughs> together called Diamond Dogs. The idea that uh, Rick Steiner, the dog face gremlin, is a dog, not that crazy, because there has been like spot and moon dogs. Yes. <laughs> Tom dog is literally a He's diamond. He's a diamond. <laughs> well, I mean, they did put those shines on his teeth. He was like the king of the trolls in the Discworld books. He's diamond. Mr. Shine. Uh, so, yeah, let's check out the back here. All for revenge. Nine years after the fall of Mother Base, etc., etc. Text in both English, French, and this is shocking because I was just looking at something the other day um, that was in English and French. And I'm like, why the fuck not Spanish? They got Spanish text. It's like, you know, oh wow, Viva la Raza. <laughs> we acknowledge the fact that you guys spend way more money in this country than French speakers do. Well, I mean, I think it's like they have the North European American. Edited. Yeah, it's for yeah. I would imagine they if have. If they wanted to sell this in Canada, basically, they got to put the. Uh, and you know, you can the study French the demographics. Are the Quebecois uh, spending more money in North America than Spanish speakers? Kind of doubt it, but whatever. Uh, Donald Trump might have something to say about that. You're so wrong he, about that. Is what he probably <laughs> said. <laughs> then he call out Bobby Lashley. <laughs> you guys are losers. <laughs> I'm a winner. So yeah, here we go, folks. This is legit. I haven't actually opened this what yet. What the? <laughs> you have. You have a Terminator arm. I have a Terminator arm. What the fuck? Well, don't want to spoil things for Bobo, but if you're watching the previews and stuff, you could, you could, I guess, uh, until it shows up in game, I will just, I don't want to spoil anything for Bobo. Let's say that this is, uh, Zadornov's well, hand, okay? Well, no, the thing is, like, I, I recognize we did play through, uh, here, bring that down a little bit. Oh, so thank you. Um, we did play through the, uh, the ground, not, yeah, whatever, the, the Ground Zeroes. Peace Walkers and Ground Zeroes, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, there's a big and, like, fucking explosion. There's a big explosion, Shit and at the end, up. there's a cinematic, and somebody, like, appears to have a hook hand, and... But what we've got here right now, we're going to need to destroy in order to prevent Judgment Day from taking place. And we're also going to have to kill Arnold himself, lower him into the lava, because he can't self-terminate. Hey, no. And that didn't take long. Right back at you, buddy. <laughs> you know, I didn't plan that in advance, because I didn't know the fingers were articulable. Oh, wait, no, you but just pretty, had to, you had to doing the Zadornov uh, victory. Pretty much the moment I found it, found you could do it. It's like, shall I do the Zadornov thing first? No, let's go straight to the one finger. So, it, so it's, it's also carefully labeled. You can see here, uh, well, you may or may not be able to focus. Forearm holding lever latch. Cutie, like what? I don't know. Cutie, but it is—it's cutie pie. Oh, it's cutie pie. It's a one half scale replica of something that will be appearing in the game. So there you go. <laughs> it's a one half scale replica of something that totally exists. Now this is—we uh, need to hurry up and finish this video so we can start the eight-hour install process for this game. <laughs> but here's the actual game, and you know what? Oh, if I got something. Uh, 
Give me one second, folks. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. Titus or you. Well, you know, my thoughts are. And who's more creepy to see doing a like yin yang recreation, Titus and Yuna or Big Boss and Salt Snake? Oh, it's got to be Big Boss and Solid Snake. It can't be uh, Big Boss and uh, Kaz here. That actually makes more sense now you think so. Oh, you're right. Okay. Now that I totally can see. I mean, look at the two of them there. I mean, they're turning away from each other, but uh, you, you can see the intent in their hearts. Well, we know that as soon as we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're like booze? <laughs> the no, moment like, you turn the other direction, they're like, think about it, won't you? Thank you. <laughs> like, I, I wish I could remember like any of the tune from the like the love theme of Final Fantasy X-2. <clears throat> you could totally sing it. Like, anyway, moving on. Uh... All right, so we got a disc. It's Angora. Is that wait? Is there an S at the end of that? Does it actually say Angolus? I guess we'll probably see Angola. In a moment. Probably. There probably was a card like this in the Final Fantasy X when it just says "Warning: You will have a <laughs> danger. High you, will have, you will have seizures if you play this game, etc." That's about it. So we got a map. So you have a map of Angola, I guess. Uh, Diamond Dogs area. Let's see what this map actually is. This, this, this might be a bit more than we can really show properly. This is but the Angola Zaire border region. Okay. So uh, there would uh, apparently be a chunk of game that's going to be set here. And uh, one of the big big points they made about this game was that uh, it's, it's going to be open world-ish. Right. We'll see how that works. Yeah. And then we got Northern Kabul, Afghanistan. I had a joke all ready to go about how this isn't an accurate map of Afghanistan. Where's the bas the Camp Bastion Pizza Hut? But I can't make it because they specified Northern Kabul. Um, so, yeah, I would be. I do not know the geography of Northern Kabul in any kind of way where I could comment on whether this is accurate, but it's a neat, neat idea. They, they're kind of already given this a a feel that's more real world than Act 4 is set in unidentified Eastern European city where you walk around in a series of causeways that don't actually go anywhere. Yeah. But, yeah, there you go. Time to go. Areas of operation. Yako Obu Supply Outpost. Dagwanda Car. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty cool. It's pretty heavy score. I will. That will end up somewhere with my uh, map of Vice City from Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which I still have all these years later and uh, fold it up. Then, uh, I don't think there's we any. may still have our Final Fantasy one map somewhere. <laughs> I think we might. With the bestiary on the other side. Now we've got uh, Big Boss, and um, it's the same thing. It's the it's the relationship. Who is his true love? Is it Big Boss and Kaz, or is it Big Boss and Revolver Ocelot? <laughs> oh, is that Ocelot? So love, there? This is Ocelot. There's a love triangle going on here. Oh, and you got the metal box. And this is the... Which I know is important, because you usually keep those discs in there. <laughs> this is the collector's edition disc, and I really don't know what's on it. And uh, we're not equipped to show you now. So, right. let's call it a video. Okay. Anyway, folks, uh, yeah, so we've... <laughs> I don't normally get into the unboxing thing, but I thought I might as well have fun with it. It was fun to do an unboxing for RTK12, whose box is over there in a corner somewhere. <laughs> Shuge Leon could pop up and have a cameo, but I don't feel like getting up again. And, of course, Bobo uh, on his channel. Go check out his unboxing video of me opening a Hickory Farms gift box. Um, I know that you have a choice when it comes to Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain Let's Plays, but I hope you'll join Bobo and I as we Let's Play this game together, blind, because... Why? It just came out. <laughs> because it just came out, and, you know, why wait until you know the game before Let's Playing it?